Welcome to the first episode of Architecture, Leadership and Beyond, where I and other guests or experts will share their experiences, insights, opinions about the world of software development. This is a new format in my channel. If you are already a subscriber, it's going to be very different from the 10 minute video. In those, I explain a complex topic um, by giving you as much information as I can in a short amount of time so that you can build a high level understanding of that subject. In this one, in this format, we'll take it easier so that we can go deeper into topics. It's going to be unscripted, but it's going to be real because we want real world experiences that make us think. In this episode, we will discuss in the first part, I want to talk about how you can become a technical leader and why I think it's very important that you become one. And in the second part, I want to discuss about what's the mindset of a successful leader and how we can use that mindset to improve ourselves and excel at whatever we do. This talk, I believe it applies to any seniority. Uh, you could be a junior developer, a senior software architect, CTO, it doesn't matter. And I also think that it applies to other disciplines. And if you're wondering who am I and how um, I can speak about this topic, I'm the lead architect for a successful infrastructure as a service product being developed by multiple development teams. It's a very challenging position, but on the other end, I started as everyone as a junior developer. So I think I can describe easily the journey from a junior developer to a leadership position. Let's get started. So let's answer uh, the first question, which is how can you become a leader? And obviously we want to do it fast. And at the beginning of my career, um, when I joined my first software development team, I was shocked because I realized that professional software development was way more complex than I imagined. So the only way I could learn the trade was by observing others. You have to look around you. And ideally, you learn to spot success. Like you try to observe those that are being good at what they do. You, you don't try to emulate failure, right? And then you should not be afraid and you should ask help. And ideally, you find a mentor. In my case, I was lucky. I had more than one mentor in my life. And I'm telling you that because I believe that a mentor is a fast lane to success. And I'm 100% sure that without uh, my mentors, I would never have reached uh, this position in my life. A mentor, it's like a fast lane to success. Uh, it's like being at the airport. There would be the standard lane and the priority lane. It lets you skip in front. And the reason is because you will grow much faster if you have somebody that can share um, their own experience or even direct you, you know, and give you the tools to grow. And the other important thing um, is you always need to have a critical mind. And so, you know, after the initial um, stage or phase where you're trying to understand how things work, you will get more comfortable. And now it's time to analyze more, to understand what works well and what doesn't work well. And once you identify areas, of the system, of the application you're building that can be improved, you have to share that feedback, but always do it in a constructive way. Um, otherwise you will make enemies. You want to make friends. So it has to be always, you always have to show that your interest, it's not you know pleasing your ego, but you want to improve the product and you have to do it in a mindful way. You need to be very empathic. And um, if you do this, so if you observe, you have a mentor, you have a critical mind, you share constructive feedback, eventually you will be entrusted with important features. 
um, with the important areas of the system. And those are your first tickets to success. Uh, and when you get one of them, you need to give it all. Um, because that's, if the future is important, what will happen is you'll end up uh, interacting more with the team lead, uh, with the software architect, or with the uh, dev manager. So it's your chance to shine. And the way you shine, it's not by coming up with something complicated. Remember that you need to be effective and efficient. So your solution has to be elegant, but lean. You know, like keep that in mind because it's very easy, you know, to overdo it, over engineer it, and you end up with something that's just complex. No one wants that. Now, if we keep on getting these important features, obviously we will grow, we will become stronger software developers. But the problem is that many engineers get stuck in this level. They will, they will sharpen their technical skills, but they won't go further. And even though, I mean, you can grow, you can do career just, you can do a career by being a software engineer, but I believe that objectively you're kind of staying in the same spot. You reach your comfort zone and you're not going further. And the reason is that at the end of the day, you are a single individual. You are one person. So there is a limit to the positive impact you can have to your team or your organization if you focus exclusively on your personal growth from a technical standpoint. Um, you won't have a company-wide impact. I think the only way you can extend your positive influence, impact, it's by becoming a leader. And why? Because by becoming a leader, you don't help just yourself grow, but you help others grow. And at, the, at this point, you're not improving just your output, but you're improving the output of many other people. And the more people you influence, the bigger your impact is. And that's why I believe that, you know, the only way to grow at that stage is moving to leadership. Now, when I mention leadership, it's not about the title. You can be a leader in your own team. You can be a de facto leader. You know, when I mentioned and that if you are a junior developer, you look for those people, you know, that they are helping others. Over time, you will be the senior developer that is helping junior developers, right? And that, that, that's being a leader. Obviously, you can grow even from a career perspective. You can become a team lead, tech lead, software architect, um, solution architect, enterprise architect, CTO, whatever you want, right? The sky is the limit. But once you start um, dealing with leadership, you will figure out that technical skills are not enough. And actually, they are, I wouldn't say a small portion, but I think they are less than one third of the kind of skills you need to be successful in a leader role. So now that we agreed, that to grow and expand our impact, we need to move into leadership. The question is, how can you become a good leader? And I will keep it short. Before you start leading others and showing them the way, you need to understand what's the right way because you don't want to send them in the wrong direction. Or another way of saying it is that you need, before you define the how, I will going to do something, which if you are a software architect, before you do a design, you need to understand why you're doing it, which is you need to understand the business vision. Or if there are multiple stakeholders, you need to understand what do they want? What are their needs? Because your design has to answer their needs. Um, and the way you do it, I think it was best described by Gregor Hopp um, in his Architect Elevator Metaphor, which is also a book. And 
in this metaphor, it describes an organization as a tall building um, where there is uh, an architect that is riding the lift up and down. Each floor represents a different department in the organization. At the very top, you have the executives, the decision makers, and down at the bottom, you have the engine room, the engineers, where the actual work is done. And you, as an architect, you go up and down because you want to let the information flow. You want the business vision to trickle down to the engine room and feedback from the engine room to go all the way up to the business so that they can make informed decision. Obviously, according to the organization, if it's small, you might write the lift top to bottom. But if it's a larger organization, maybe you won't go to all the floors as a technical leader. But it's important that you build as much connections as you can. And that one would require, you know, all these skills that are called soft skills, but in reality, I think they are very hard skills because you need to be able to network, to build close relationships and to gain trust. And I believe that all in that way, you can be effective. If we use the architect elevator approach, apart from building connections, we will actually gain a better understanding of the business vision. And that will make us better equipped to now define the how. We, if we are, you know, a principal engineer, software architect, whatever, if we are in a position where we need to define how a particular feature is going to be implemented, we will be in a better position to do the technical design. And it doesn't really bind a lot with leadership, which is the main argument of this video, but I want to highlight that when you're doing a technical design, keep in mind that a good design is a design that can be implemented in a short amount of time. And that's not going to cost an enormous amount of money because at the end of the day, those are two major factors that affect, you know, the business competitiveness. And the other factor I would always keep in mind is that your design has to allow for flexibility. But flexibility is not over engineering. It doesn't mean in the future I might need this feature and this other feature, so I start building for them now. No, you don't need to do that. You never have to pay the cost upfront. You just have to have a design that will allow you to extend the system or possibly to remove portions of the system in the future. That's what I mean for flexibility. And uh, keep in mind that also, theoretically, you shouldn't come up with a single design. You should come up with a set of options. You should highlight the pros and cons to this of these options to the stakeholders, and then you should let the stakeholders make the final decision. Now, you know, now we, we're going to have a very similar problem to a software developer that gets comfortable in his role. The question is, once we start, you know, becoming good at uh, doing components design, system designs, how can we go even further? Like, how can our positive effect go over the features we're designing or whatever we're doing. And I think that the key at this stage becomes increasing your influence. Um, it's a bit of, you know, it's debatable, but I, I believe that a title is not everything and influence is actually um, more important than title. And I can give you an example. You could have someone, maybe, I don't know, um, they just recruited a new director or VP or manager in your company. And, you know, he has a very um, important title, but he's not influential. And he, he didn't manage, you know, to gain the trust of people above or people under him. I believe that title aside, his lack of influence is making it ineffective. You know, it doesn't have a positive impact in the company. On the other hand, you could have a software developer 
or I don't know, Atimlit or whatever, that it's well respected by everyone. And everyone leverages him for opinions. That, that, that's an example for me of a very influential person that has a positive impact that spans the thing he does, right? So that's why I think that once you reach a position of leadership, the only way you can grow it's by increasing your influence. And then I think title will come with it. But the key is the your influence, not trying to make a career by, you know, getting a funky uh, badge, you know. One of the most effective leadership styles I've seen, and that's the one that I personally use, is servant leadership. Like, I try to be a servant leader. And I know that it's an oxymoron, because if you take the word servant to its most negative connotation, it's like all I'm doing is serving others. On the other side, the leader should be, you know, the one who shows the way, who leads the way, you know, a more authoritative figure. But the reason is, and that this is very effective uh, when you combine these two words, is that a servant leader is simply a leader who is service-oriented. Its main target is serving others, and you serve others by producing value for them. Um, in other words, if we go back and we think about the fact, you know, we are networking with different departments and layers in our organization. We're doing that because we want to, to understand what are their needs? What do they need? And then our job is give it to them uh, as much as possible, right? Like we need to answer their needs. If they have a problem, we need to give a solution to their problem. And why I think this one eventually will increase your influence and will put you in a position to lead effectively. Because if you do it well, you know, like you keep humble, while you always try to empower others, you know, you're very dependable, you're tr trustworthy, and you're even giving them value, like they have a need and you answer it. And you know, you're satisfied for them. Over time, you will become a sought-after product. There would be a demand for you. Like, people know that when they have a very tough problem, they can come and ask you, and you will solve it for them. Or actually better, you won't solve it for them, and they will have to tell you thank you. You will give them the tools so that they can solve it themselves. That's empowering. And this is, you know, a technique that will make people come to you much and much more often. Um, empowering is extremely powerful. And, I mean, it's literally like you're creating a demand for yourself. And effectively, you're gaining influence because the larger the pool of people you trust, the easier it will be for you to influence them in a particular direction. And now it comes the other important uh, part of the equation that you need also to build a vision. And obviously this you know, comes with time. And I mean, I'm not a C-level um, executive, but I believe that what differentiates me from them is that their focus is on strategy, on vision. And I try to absorb what the vision is. On the other end, I need to translate it to something that makes sense in my world. So I will create my own version of their vision. And that's why I need to use, I need the influence so that I can implement this vision, right? Um, I feel that when you get to this stage, you end up, building a positive culture around you, where you promote collaboration, share goals, and that's a win-win for everyone. Um, and it will lead to enormous organizational success. Let's conclude here, because I think we discussed a lot and uh, I'm putting too much meat on the barbecue. So let's sum it up. 
what we discussed is that um, to become a leader and to become a leader fast, you need to observe, have a very critical mind, but most importantly, look for mentors because those are the first lane to success. Once you step into leadership, it's very important that you look at the big picture and you focus on the why before defining the how something is done. And then the way you excel at leadership, especially if you live in the middle areas of the organization, is by being a servant leader. If you live at the top, you will focus more on strategy, ambition, setting. But if you live in the middle, the best strategy, in my opinion, is to be a servant leader. You service others, you lead by example, and you build these connections that make you influential. And as we said, I think that influence can be more important than title. And not only for yourself, but at the end of the day, it's for the benefit of the company. Because if all you're doing is trying to influence people to adopt a a positive culture, that's a success for the entire organization, for all stakeholders. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I don't know how many of you uh, did it till now. Please feel free to comment. Um, It's the first time I do a video like this, so I'm sure it didn't come as I wished. Um, So I accept constructive criticism, not destructive. And don't forget to subscribe, um, like the video, and share it with your colleagues so that everyone can learn something new.